Hi, I'm Mark from Public Ohio Sportsman, and today we had a deer get donated to us. Uh, we just started the YouTube channel up, and we figured, even though it's a roadkill deer, um, a friend of ours got it and brought it here. Thanks, Brandon Mead. Um, what we're going to end up doing today is demonstrating how to butcher a deer because it's pretty much all the same, whether it's a one you hunt with or you got on the side of the road. But uh, deer season ended yesterday and we got a deer already to, uh, as you can see, got hit pretty hard on this side. All this stuff right here. Um, so I'm assuming that this is going to be the good side of everything. Um, we're going to get down to it. We're going to skin it. Um, see what we can salvage off of it, but it's kind of like Christmas Day because after we skin it, we don't know what to expect underneath with like blood clots, stuff like that. So this video is more of a demonstration of just general uh, meat cutting, but after we're done, uh, you'll see how to also process uh, roadkill deer and stuff like that, but it's pretty much the same. So if you see the one side that's good getting done, you pretty much just copy it on the opposite, but as you can tell, the opposite side is tore down pretty well because we haven't even cut the steer yet besides gutting it. Um, you always feel dress it out there and just get that as clean as you can. Uh, we're going to go through it today. We're going to skin it and then take a look at the damage that's done and then cut off and salvage what we can. And uh, after that, we'll get back in and we'll do it kind of like a step by step and just show it after, during. Uh, there's parts that we might fast forward in the video. But uh, my buddy Josh is on camera, and this thing's still pretty frozen solid, actually. <laughs> so we're going to have fun skinning it, because it's been 8 degrees or 9 degrees here in Ohio. And, like I said, this works for any deer, but this deer in particular, um, probably one side's going to be destroyed, which is probably the side that was on impact. There's bone and stuff coming out of it right now. Um, but this other side should be good, but we, it's like I said, it's like Christmas Day, we don't know what we're going to expect once we get in here, but we're going to take it from the top and go down. Uh, we're probably even going to end up tanning the high and stuff like that, um, just, just to use it. We might even make a video later on in the summer about, you know, how the hide turned out, but we're going to just try to use the animal because it's a waste to leave them on the side of the road, and we like jerky, so we're going to make this. We got that saw down, and there's legs, so first thing first, all four legs kind of off where you can get them at. These ones kind of fell off because it was hit by a vehicle again, but uh, other than that, yeah, you want to kind of separate it just at that joint, if you can see on all four. Take those off first, it'll make skinning a hell of a lot easier, but we'll just throw those on the ground for now, and then we're going to make our incisions coming from up in here all the way up kind of to where we got the gut the gut pile or Josh already got the gut pile at and I think I might use another knife as well so from here it's so nice having a stool by the way I mean usually when I do this at home it's just in my porch area so um do you want to just go ahead and, instead of actually, this is a rip to one, this is so frozen. Do you think we should go up and to there and skin it? you think it'll make it easier? you think I should just take it off? Try to keep the hide as big as possible, I guess. The head? The hide. The hide as big as possible? Try to keep as much the hide on the back as good as possible, I guess. Alright. So, usually... You cut down that arm a little bit, kind of make your way in there. But I'm gonna go from here and just cut up, cut up. Even though it's still pretty frozen, I'm gonna cut it up. And you see how the skin just kind of naturally falls away. There, you gotta have a sharp knife. Cut away from your body. Never cut towards yourself. Just stab yourself. I have so many scars on my hands um, from just cutting stuff but I, what I'm doing here is I'm literally after that joint I'm going in here and I'm gonna cut and make an incision to pretty much the center of this brisket down to this area 
and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom of this deer as well. And I'm going to cut from here up this leg into this area. And then when we take it from up here, from the neck, and we rip that skin down, it's going to make everything a lot easier uh, at the end of the day to come off. And we're also going to mess around with tanning the hide too. So we'll keep continuing, but I just wanted to kind of slow down and give you an idea of if you can see where you want to cut just to get your basic skinning and stuff down do you like how it is right there yeah with this so you can see yeah i do oh dude i'm afraid once we get into this thing how bad it's gonna be How deep are you cutting there? Not too, too deep. I just want the skin. I mean, probably an inch, and that's just because she's got. Yeah. She's got some fat on her. And then these legs are already pretty much tore down. But, I'll go up in here and cut this just for. You want to rotate help. a little bit if you could. Okay, so this is the side that's been hit by the car, so we're just going to kind of cut this fur down so it's easier to gut, or not gut, but to skin. And then this is the side that actually might be, have some sort of potential to it, so we'll actually try to be pretty nice to this side. Um, I'll go in, right about there. I just need to make an incision just so I can see. How much would you say a deer like that weighs? I don't know, what do you think? She probably... And if you can tell, I'm making this incision going down. Ah. See, I'm just splitting this at this point. And I'm working my way down towards that knee. But I'm also making sure to keep that knife and everything away from me. So even if I slip, I'm cutting out away from my body. So just make sure you do that. And now it's for the fun part. We're going to go from the neck now. And we made an incision on all four legs. So we made the incision there. This one is, I mean, I got in there and kind of just got it to where I could, to where it's workable on both sides. Actually, you can see the loop of my finger. I can cut in here and I just separated everything. So it met all the incisions. So when we actually pull it out, it's gonna be pretty simple. I'm gonna take out the brisket area. Anyway, just so it's easier. But yeah, you're gonna have fat in here stuff like that but we're gonna go from the top i just wanted to kind of show you how easy this stuff peels away it's normal to have fat in there but like i said this is a road kill deer so this isn't going to be my best job ever but we'll we'll get in here and see what we're dealing with so we're going to make a nice little cut around the neck area right here and uh we're gonna go from here I'm breaking my own rules, cutting towards myself, don't do it. See how my knife just slipped, but I stopped. Um, so yeah, you see that right there, how everything just kind of separated. All right, so I, I do want to start getting in here and to preserve as much as I can. You're gonna get hair on stuff. Um, usually this process, you can tell the it sticks to the knife. I mean, it's, you're gonna get hair on it. It's not a big deal. I've eaten many hair in my life, <laughs> but I like this knife. It's really sharp, so I'm glad I used your stuff, not mine. <laughs> so 
see. Okay, so I made an incision now. See, this hair is just flying everywhere, but that's fine. Um, I made an incision right here, all around that neck, completely. I just tap myself. So you see how everything's just kind of separated if you move it around. So from here, because he's going to want to preserve the hide on this back end, I think I'm going to go from the front end where everything's kind of messed up so we have a nice big chunk that comes off evenly in the back. So I'm going to go straight on with it. I'm going to slowly take my knife and honestly, once you get to this point, you can put your fingers in there and uh, just slowly kind of cut it down. But it is interesting trying to get trying to get yourself started here can be. Okay, so you see I'm just barely getting in there. I don't really have too much room. Okay, there we go. See how I'm just barely getting in there and going going to town. And then I got my fingers in here. I separate it. Separate that hide a little bit. I'm trying to keep the hair off as well as I can. But I'm kind of getting sick of messing around with my Christmas gift. I want to open it up now. <laughs> so, uh. Got a hair in my eye. You do? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that, sir. The risks of being a camera guy. Better than porn. I'm sorry, I'll have to edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry your career didn't work, man. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of getting in here. I'm giving myself something to work with. The, the more of this I can get away, the easier this deer is going to be to work with. By the way, tell your dad I'm sorry about all the hairs around here. Uh, come on. So I'm getting all this hair everywhere. It's going to be kind of a messy process, but that's why I said don't wear any clothes that you care about when you're doing it. That's kind of a common sense thing, but still if people... And I'm getting in there and just kind of... Plus I've noticed with roadkill deer, it seems like they lose a lot more hair because they're yeah. stressed out and stuff. Yeah, and this thing accident. probably died a couple minutes afterwards. So, eh, As you can see, and here's some trauma and stuff. There's a black. That's probably a blood clot right there. See it on the tip of that knife. Um, that's the kind of stuff where you'll have uh, glass and shards from the accident going through or maybe arrow or bullet damage or fragments. But usually on a regular deer, you're going to be shooting. I've seen deer hit all in here and die. So most of the time you're not dealing with this kind of weird stuff, but, and the meat's usually fine unless they were like stabbed or something or got shot prior to it. You got a gangster deer. Get shot prior. Now what I'm gonna try to do, if this works, it'll help. But now that I got a good, a good, good piece of this, to grab on to this will also help with all the fur on there as well I'm really gonna put some force into this I hope everything works out the way I planned but this is kind of a savage process so bear with me I, uh, oh, see yeah. now people like me I'll have to cut all that stuff off Mark can just rip it right off. Because I'm a bear or something? <laughs> uh, hold on. All right, we're going to do another little... Well, I can get these legs out right now. And right here, I mean, it's kind of helpful to have this knife handy. You can just kind of see where I'm getting stuck at. The kind of sinew... It's not sinew, but it's like a... Just a membrane. See how I'm getting everything back down to original. And it will just come off, especially if the deer's still warm. The skin will just come off. But as you can see, 
you can see the penetration all over this hide where the impact was and you're going to want to stay away from when you start looking you see stuff like this i mean this is actually pulsating like blood out still but usually that's what like a bullet wound or something would look like is that that real bloody mess of deer but we're gonna keep going with it oh wow she's just starting to come, come apart Do you have anything that you want to add to it? Because I'm just kind of sitting here, getting to town. I'm trying to get you the biggest piece of hide here, but it's kind of a pain. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, you usually have to cut this. You don't just kind of rip it. Rip it good. I pull as much as I can, but... Oh, wow. I don't know. That is what you don't want, but... It's hitting the back. All right. Oh, yeah. We were, uh, we were hoping it was hitting the head. Yeah, we were. <laughs> we were hoping it was hit, like, right there on the side, on one side, and then everything would be perfect, but... That's what happens when you get a demonstration deer, and... I mean... This is all for just research, science, demonstration science. purposes. All right, so you see how I got my hand back through here. I mean, it smells good still. It smells good. And, smells like a good Midwestern uh, whitetail. Got that corny, sweet smell to it. <laughs> She's been eating good. She's got some fat on her. But, I'm just kind of getting in here. I mean, this side doesn't look too bad. Once we get in here, this side doesn't look bad. We'll actually go in here and maybe, this is probably the side that we'll be working with the most compared to, as you can tell, I mean, this is how it was picked up without a leg up here. So uh, we're assuming it got hit this way. You can see all the damages and just little blood clots and that is something we're not gonna mess with. Um, but we'll keep going with it and see where we get. All right. There you go. All right. Grab that up. So your hide's going to kind of come off in a nice little piece like that. We're going to set this aside because we're going to mess with it and see if we can't. I even turned out the tail, if you can see. So we'll just push that back through. So we're back. Um, we took a little break. But as you can see, deer's not perfect by any means. Yours that you shot will probably look a hell of a lot better than this one does. Uh, we're just doing this for demonstration. A lot of this fat on here, I can just trim this off. But I'm going to go about this like I was actually just doing my own deer that just got shot right through there or something, you know, right in the rib cage. So usually what I do on a normal deer after I'm done with the whole skinning process is actually usually the first thing I do is I get up in here and I'll take out these tenderloins, which are right here. Okay, so these actually don't look like they're in bad shape internally. So we'll end up cutting those out last after I get this. This is called the paunch. The paunch piece is right behind the the rib on the deer. And this is almost like on a regular cut of beef, this would be like your flank steak or your brine stuff. But as you can see, a lot of this meat we're going to have to actually go through because there's just some different, you know, blood clots and just stuff like that that's unsavory you don't want in there. I know this deer's good. It's been 8 degrees outside. Um, it snowed and then this deer ended up on the side of the road. I called a buddy, Brandon, picked it up, got a tag for it from uh, the state of Ohio, uh, Division of Highway Patrol. So it's a roadkill tag. It's free. Um, if you do end up hitting your own deer, don't leave it on the side of the road because, I mean, it's good. It's good meat. Um, even if we get 
20, 30 pounds or something out of this, it's still 20 or 30 pounds of jerky we can mess around with. And it was the last day of deer season. I haven't been out deer hunting since months later, so it's been like a month. So I've eaten up all the jerky, as you can tell, because the GoPro mount doesn't fit up in this region anymore, that uh, I ate all the jerky. So we're gonna try to make some jerky with this, hopefully. But this this piece, I mean, I'm just gonna kind of toss on the ground. Um, so, okay, this is a normal deer, just let's pretend that. Um, but before we pretend that, I'll show you why we're not even messing with this side. There's some holes. I don't know if you can see that. That little hole right here. But that is probably where some glass and, you know, shards from that accident right here too. You can see blood clots. Right here you can see blood clots. If I actually just poke that and squeeze it, I bet you some blood will just come right out of there, but I'm not I'm not gonna do that, but. <laughs> All right, so on a normal deer though, this isn't a normal deer, but for the most part, this front shoulder blade doesn't really have anything besides muscle back here holding it on. So what I always do is I always lift it, and as you can tell, that's damaged, but I just go in here and cut, and you'll see the, right, right in here, there's nothing holding it to it like it is down here with the hip there's a hip bone down here that will actually pop it's a ball and socket bone but up here usually on my first some of my first cuts that i do is usually that tenderloin area and then i come in here and i'll just take this whole shoulder off there's nothing really holding it in there as you can see um, this is actually a really tore up deer on the side that I thought was good, but we'll, we'll get in here and take a look at what's going on. See how that shoulder blade just comes right off? I mean, there's really nothing holding it in there. Yeah, it's broke right there too. So we're just doing this for demonstration purposes, but there's no bone to go through. I have this whole piece off now. Um, a lot of hunters refer to this as being quartered after you, you know, grab your tenderloins from the inside and then afterwards you know you have all four legs off it's quartered hence we're not going to do it here but i mean we could too but i'm not even going to attempt that because this shoulder looked the best and this side is where i think it got hit and this side's still pretty damaged up we'll go through it and take a good look at it and get the hair off and process it accordingly you just want to throw it on top of there for now i should have got you a bag but Okay, so now that we're done with that, this is the other, this is the real gem of any deer. I'm going to kind of get some of this disgusting blood clot stuff out of the way. But that's exactly why you want to be careful if you do get a, a deer on the side of the road or hit one and decide to take it home is because if you look, I mean, it's quite graphic, uh, but that's why is all this, all this trauma that the car crash happened with. It's usually not this blood clot. Like this looks like where it would have gotten shot on a regular deer. That's what it'll look like. And you just cut around that and everything else is good. But with this, you gotta be extra careful because like I said before, there could be shards or pieces of metal or anything in this you know it wasn't an arrow or a bullet that killed this deer it was a vehicle unfortunately so we got that taken care of so the front shoulders off and then usually I flip it around and I do the same thing here and just for demonstration purposes I'll do it again just to show you how quick you can actually do this if you know what you're doing Boom, that's real time. That's what it takes me to take it off. And I've processed, I don't know, 10 deer in my life by hand, just, you know. So you get quicker as you go, but that's, we're gonna quarter it out now accordingly. And then we're gonna hit what this piece is right here called the back strap. So that's your fillet. And it pretty much runs from the base of the neck 
right here and it's gonna run all the way down to like in here right where your the paunch piece which is like your flank stake which I threw because it didn't it doesn't really produce or hold but we're gonna keep going and breaking it down so now now that I'm here I'm just gonna kind of trim away some of this membrane and all this fat I'll get in here I mean, she had some fat on her. That's good. But as you can see, there's a nice line that goes. This is the rib cage that I'm holding down here, where the base of where you know gutted it yesterday. That's all rib in here. So from the bottom of that rib cage to about here, there's a line that goes down that you can actually feel the top of those ribs with your fingertips right in here we're gonna have some damage there's like a broke rib right there I can feel it honestly you could probably feel it inside oh uh, yeah actually look so just feeling this dude I didn't look inside but I can tell that I have a Where broke rib right in here so we'll keep going with everything is he just gonna go ahead and eat He's like, hmm, deer fat. This ought to be good. When was the last time you had some deer fat? I'm gonna go ahead and just cut in right along the spine. So the spine's gonna run, you know, a good demonstration. The BC, right in here. I'm gonna run this all the way down and I'm gonna take out in between the spine and the top of that rib cage. So in between the spine, you'll see the bone if you cut it just a little bit i'm gonna get down okay we're gonna get hair everywhere but oh well it's just a pain to... so i found that spine i can feel a spine right in here and as you can see i'm going in in towards that spine and i'm gonna run it you know all the way down or the best that I can. I'm, you know, we're just doing a quick job with this one today for just demonstration and stuff. We'll do an actual real deer next season when it won't be destroyed as badly, but I'm getting in here. I'm getting all this stuff out of here. This, this is just fat. You don't really want it on there. Get it out of there. And then that big chunk right in there, that's going to be your best. That's the filet mignon of the whole thing. So, that's referred to as the back strap, obviously, because it's a a nice, I don't know, I'd say 24 inch piece of meat. And it runs, it's, it's beautiful, it's ice cold. Oh, thank God nothing happened to her back strap. I shouldn't say that yet. So yeah, and then you can kind of feel too, with your fingers, it has a natural run line. So I'll cut it down here. You see how I just kind of cut into it right down in there just to get the piece out. I'll cut it. I'll go down to about here where I can start feeling that hip. So now I have a nice chunk taken out of that back strap and we'll go in and clean it up more. But I'm just right now, I'm just trying to get the biggest hunks of meat that I can while maneuvering a camera. I'm not maneuvering it, but yeah, I mean, this doesn't look bad. Oh, it's ice cold though, that's good. Yeah, winter roadkill makes me less freaked out than summer. And honestly, that, you see that piece just kind of ripped out of there with a little bit of force. It just ripped out of there pretty much. I mean, and I'll even cut, I'm gonna ride it out. I mean, the back strap's the best part. Mm -hmm. So, and as you can see, like I said, it kind of stops right here along the base of that neck. So right here, I have all this stuff to cut out. As you can see, spinal cord. I don't know if you can hear it, but that's the spine. 
This is the top of the ribs, and we just rode it all the way down. And this is gonna be your amazing pieces of steak and the good stuff. So that is a couple pounds of steak. We'll trim it up and we'll get it going. But that's just one side, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the reversal side, um, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, even though it might not be good, we'll go through the meat later. It's just to show people how to basically break down and do it quickly. As you can see, that's actually a rib in there. So, like I said, between the spinal cord on top of the ribs, pretty much from the base of the neck all the way down to that hip bone is going to be just a huge section that you take out. And that's going to be the, like some of the best meat that you get besides your inside tenderloins. I already took the one side off right here that you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to do that um, right now. And we're just going to cut off the flank steak, the paunch piece, pretty much to the rib for demonstration purposes. Never cut towards yourself, I just realized that. Um, again, it's like a flank steak, but it's damaged. Um, we're gonna get in here though, and you see this piece right in here that runs from like the base of the rib, the last rib, down to, I don't know, probably in here. But I mean, I'd, I'm gonna take it to about here just because of the, condition of it so I'm gonna go right in there I'm gonna go up I'm just gonna kind of poke around like this piece honestly if you wanted to once you get a cut going in there if you can see that you can pretty much just take this out with your hand I mean it's that kind of tender of meat and that's gonna be your inside tenderloin it's not a very big piece on this deer because usually I can get a little bit more but I took this side out and this side out and we'll evaluate it later. Um, so we're gonna keep doing that. So, so far, let's just do a recap. Um, we skinned it first. We took off the shoulder because there's nothing holding the shoulders on. Okay, and then we took out the back strap which goes along that backbone. And then we took out the tenderloins. Usually the tenderloins is the first thing I grab, honestly, and then I go, go in, but we're doing a little bit different today and this is like a Christmas gift we didn't know what to expect so we're just gonna butcher it like a regular deer and um, honestly a lot of this meat isn't gonna be good but it's a good tool to learn with and we can salvage something out of it so we're gonna go ahead and do that because we wanted to get a video up and we didn't want to wait till September next year to do so if we're lucky if we're lucky, come on. <laughs> Don't say if we're lucky. We're gonna get one in September. Two years in a row on opening day, both season I've shot a doe, so. It's it's a running thing now. Friday the 13th is supposed to be an un, or a lucky day or unlucky day. I shot a doe. All That's right, when so I shot my hog. It was Friday the 13th, 2019. It's crazy. Maybe Friday the 13th are gonna be good for us. Hopefully it's when we find a sponsor. That'd be good. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of trimming. Hashtag 10 point. Hashtag <laughs> 10. You know what's funny is I actually, uh, when I volunteered this year for that uh, Whitetail Heritage of Ohio, 10 point actually has a lady outside of Akron who comes out and donates a lot of the stuff for the kids to uh, look at the, look, use. That's cool. It is. I mean, it's Look awesome. at the wall over there. The wall. Underneath the window? Oh, 10 point. <laughs> I see ya. Well, the lady comes out and she, they get the kids all sighted in. And there's going to be a video of my oldest son that we're waiting on because of the pandemic. We we're supposed to go to a banquet, but there's restrictions right now. So, okay, so I'm getting in here. I'm going to cut away a lot of this, just the stuff that's in the way. Um, I'm going to get a lot of this fat off of here too from the rib cage. Just to show you, you know, like, there really isn't anything in there that you, I mean, you could salvage some, but it's not going to be too, too devastating for you. Especially if you're rushed for time and it's a special situation like this. Yeah, but if you did shoot it with your 10 point, a lot of that, you can just take it out and grind it, do whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, the lady comes out, they, uh... They have some crazy stuff for kids that, like, 
there's a uh, little girl in a wheelchair that was there this year, and she, what she ended up doing was she has, a, I believe, muscular dystrophy. So her muscles tense up, so she can't pull the trigger. So they actually hook up. Oh, I saw that, yeah. They hook up a scope to some sort of mouthpiece, that when she bites down, it's, it's connected to the trigger. So she her butt was bigger action. than mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she got a buck this year, I mean. In one day, what are we doing with life? We're in here cutting up roadkill for demonstration and educational purposes. All right, so we're gonna get down in there. Like I said, yeah, I have, I've already kind of see the backbone. That's the spine. You hear it? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just cutting down now. I'm gonna go actually run my knife along the top of this rib cage where this where this is right here. It's gonna be nasty once I get in there though. I can feel it. I can feel the, the meat's not. But now that it's and you can kinda of let gravity work for itself. You can really get down in here. And I'm going to go with the whole thing, just in case there is something in here that's salvageable. But I'm getting in there and just kind of trimming along. And this isn't for pretty yet. Like, you can trim this down and make it look really nice. But this is just, like I said, a jerky deer for demonstration. Of a quick, pretty painless way to get a deer done. This is pretty much a very basic rundown that everybody if you hunt or fish you know how to do this stuff yourself but for some people they don't know so they you know need a good demonstration and there's the second piece so then yeah top of the rib cage base of the neck pretty much right here and it's gonna run all the way down there and it's just a nice piece of steak I uh, so for the steak, I'm getting all the hairs off, but this is just for demonstration. So I got a little piece I already cut here for myself to hold on to. And this is how they're just, when you're actually gonna be trimming it up. This is a, usually I use a fillet knife, but you literally just follow it. And actually, if you look, all that kind of just peels right off there as well. And if I was doing this in my way, I mean, I would take out this piece. You can trim it up to make it actually look presentable, or you can just keep it pretty rough and rustic as it is. But if you were trying to cut down some little medallions or something like this, this is a completely perfect little piece of steak right here. Okay, so you can see you can see where I ran the knife along it, along that, the skin right here. So you can see the skin right here, it's pretty, it's pretty bare. But this is what came out once you trimmed it up a little bit, looked at it. And now, I can sit here and I can make little incisions. I can cut out little medallions. I can do what I want. These are like your little steaks. Um, this is going to be like some of the best of the meat that you can get but I just want to demonstrate how you can make this stuff look pretty simply uh, it's not personally when I do this I like to take this back strap and either this one I'd either split in two or threes and then freeze pretty much the whole muscle and then I'll trim it when I'm done and I'm ready to cook it and it's thawed but I'll vacuum seal it and all that but yeah, we go in here, we just kind of trim, and thank God we got a sharp knife. I mean, <laughs> honestly. So yeah, there's that. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a nice little, you can peel other stuff away. So it's just a nice, even piece of meat here. You know, I can trim this away. Right here, see that? I'm gonna cut any discrepancies or pieces that just don't look savory. You can literally just go around it. I'm making sure there's nothing else underneath of it. I'm just gonna cut this out and I'm gonna set this aside 
from the meat that I have over here because I don't want it in any of my stuff. So, and then I'll even go right here and just demonstrate. You can go, you're not supposed to cut towards yourself, but I already took it off the skin and now I have another piece to play around with. Um, I, this is, I mean, you could throw this in a pan right now and it'd be fine. I mean, take this little piece off here. But like, if it has a little bit of connective tissue, I wouldn't really worry about it. I'd usually just freeze it in chunks at this point, but we're gonna keep going. But yeah, you can literally break this piece down a little bit and watch out for tendons like this, cause or tendons, because you're gonna chew on them. They're not gonna cook out. This is pretty tough stuff. Um, but yeah, you can, you can literally just pull these out. Trim it, trim it out of there. Or, I mean, I've even seen people take them and butterfly it like that into a bigger steak as well. And then, I mean, you throw it on the flat top like that. So with this one, you could literally take the uglier side of it, okay, and I see a little bit of blood right there. I'll just be safe and cut off of that. But I can take the ugly side, kind of separate it a little bit, called butterflying it but I mean, you can take it now and open that up and that's a whole steak. And I mean, it depends if you want to do um, a steak like this where you want like a traditional steak, you could always butterfly it because it is kind of a small piece of meat to work with. Or if you want to do something like steak and eggs with this kind of stuff where you just kind of medallion it out, I do steak and eggs with this. This will be uh, like, uh, Deer tips and noodles, um, steak and eggs. These are like your little tenderlonies, your little beauties. You gotta love them. Um, best part of the deer by far. And then I'm gonna also go in here, and I can trim this up a little bit if I want. Let me see. Because I, I got a sharp knife. This is jerky meat right here. But I'm gonna do this in real time, so. It's all. But yeah, you literally have not too, too much to work with, but you get the point. You got that whole, that whole piece of skin off. You can actually see my fingertips through it. And I mean, there is still a little bit of meat on here. Um, for time purposes, you got a general idea of how to cook, how to actually cut it up. But now that we got the front shoulder off, it's, well, we skinned it, took the front shoulders off because there's no, no uh, hip joint like you'll find at the bottom with the hind quarters on top. And then what you have here is back strap taken out on both sides. Remember I said above the rib cage and between the spine, you're just gonna run it from the base of the neck, pretty much where that body cuts up in here and it starts to, its ribs start to hit you'll see it and then you go all the way down. It's usually like 24 inches, 36 inches depending on your size. But right now I'm gonna show you why I do the legs, bottom legs last because they have a hip joint in them internally, like right in here. So usually this part does not look very good because it is a road kill deer. This usually is just fat, but I'll cut some of this away so I can see what I'm working with. You wanna watch your hands for pieces of glass, but like I said, if you shot your own, or just watching this for you know, a tutorial or whatever, you wouldn't have to worry about all this. You just trim the fat away and it'd be meat underneath. It wouldn't be damaged, but I'm gonna check all this stuff out anyway. And honestly, I can run my fingers up underneath. And when I cut down, you can actually see the blood clots in there. So you're gonna wanna process all that out. But for demonstration purposes, I'll go, we'll get back on track. So there's a hip joint in here. You're gonna go ahead and cut right about here and go towards the body. You'll you can always go in if you cut uh, at a different angle or something and you miss some meat, you can always go back in there and grab it, just add it to a grind pile or whatever. But from here, I'm pretty much going towards the ball joint in here. I'm just, like I said, I'm doing this for, this isn't going to be a pretty demonstration. This is pretty much just so somebody can get an idea of even just where to start after doing something like this or picking up a deer or hitting one or, so here's this ball joint that I'm talking about. You can't really see it yet, 
but there it is. Can you see that ball joint inside there? There's a ball and socket, so you're not gonna cut through the bone unless you get a saw. But I saw the bone, just kinda stuck my blade in between and popped it. And now that I'm in here, I can see where that bone runs, and I'm cutting around that bone. And you just let your blade do the work at that point. But then I'm cutting all the way that I can, pretty much till the blade runs into something. But then, afterwards, it's a little slippery, but you have a whole hindquarter leg. And this is pretty much going to be your top sirloin right here. So, on a normal deer, you can see it right here. This piece on the back, well, I don't even know how you describe it, but this piece right here where my hand is on is the top sirloin. That's going to be a really good cut of steak. There's a little separation right here. That's going to be the eye round, or the, yeah, the eye round. So there's going to be a little triangle in there once you get in there. And then all this stuff is too good for, like, grind. I would make this all into roasts, steaks, and most of the time you would just go in here and use your knife and follow the muscle. The muscle will pretty much let you know where you're going with it. And you can get down in there, and as you can see, the whole muscle almost just wants to pop out. You want to transition over to the... Yeah, we can. The cutting station. <laughs> so, because I did a pretty bad job of skinning it, well, I... It, Skin, but this is that membrane like that silver skin that you can't really tell too well what you're doing but this is the bread and butter piece right here I mean off this back and right there's the bone so I literally ran my knife down until I can you hear that I tap my bone so now I'm just gonna run it all the way out and you can tell where that bone is so you can run your knife along that bone like I am you see how I'm sitting in here and I just kind of have it separated I'm coming through I got to the end pretty much where the knee is. Right here, if you can tell, that's pretty much where the top of the knee is. And I'm running my knife along here. And out comes an amazing whole muscle that is literally some of the best steak on this deer other than your back straps and tenderloins. But this whole muscle, actually, once you get it all trimmed up, when you get it out of here, It's a whole ball muscle. This is your top sirloin. Um, this is a great, great piece of meat. It's probably the best off the hind end that you're gonna get. You can, like I said, butterfly it, do what you want. Usually what I do with each one, you can make these in a roast. Um, see how I got kind of just a mucusy membrane in there? I trim some of that stuff down, take that silver skin off and vacuum seal it. And I'd vacuum seal the whole piece because then you're not gonna get as much freezer burn on it if you freeze the whole muscle. Um, and then it's a lot easier to take out thaw and then adapt it to whatever venison recipe or you can always use it as beef as well. So either way, but that's another one that I actually really like. Let me cut down here a little bit. So now we're at the knee. I think this is the piece that I gave you that's in your freezer still that I had marinating. What'd you put on that? Soy and Worcestershire. And if you look right here. Uh huh. We got a blood clot, so we'll cut that one out. I don't oh, even want to. She's any. a deepen. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cut any blood clot or anything out. And I'm, I don't really care about wasting meat when it comes to something like that. That's gonna deter everybody from wanting to eat whatever it is that you're cutting up, especially kids. Um, some people just don't like deer, or they've had a bad experience with it, and uh, it's actually a really good meat if you know what you're doing with it. So. As you can tell, right there, I went along that hip socket to the knee and took off the top of that. Voila, that's taken care of now. I flipped it over and where the muscle seam is, I followed it with a knife and you can see everything comes apart. It's another good piece. This is gonna be more steak. Uh, I wouldn't grind it personally, you can. I mean, it's not as tender as your top is gonna be, but this is a, more like a roast. Uh, like I said, I would trim some of this stuff off. The fat, you don't really want on there. You see the connective tissue and stuff. Trim that down like you would skin it or like skin a fish almost. But 
Here's another good little demonstration again. And this works with all fish, everything. Like once you want the skin off of a fish and you're filleting it, I always take a little piece down here and then I follow my knife out. And just trust the knife and get as close to the skin as you can. Now that I flipped it over, you can see where that knife took out some of that connective tissue. And it really didn't waste a lot of meat either. When you think about somebody eating it later on, you'd rather lose a little bit like this than have something like this and have the recipe cased off because of the fat or tendons or your kid bites into something that they don't like and they're like, oh my God, what is that? It, it's so much easier to just trim it as a whole muscle. And the and deer then, fat's too lean. What? The deer fat's too lean. It turns into like a waxy. Yeah, so you can just kind of run your knife in here. I mean, that'll work. And I just trim all that off. And then you pretty much, I mean, this is perfect. You could take this right now and actually, nope. I'd take this piece out too. You see, you can actually see. I can get my fingers through it too. Once I have my fingers through, I can literally just go like that and cut it. And I'm good. I can go in here and trim out this stuff too. Just for. That was 10 point crossbows calling us for our sponsorship, right? That would be cool. But yeah, I'm gonna take out, see that blood clot? You can take a lot of that stuff out in there. See how it's not a problem anymore, but there still is a little. But yeah, just trim, it, trim away at it, make sure there's no glass in there. Uh, that will definitely deter somebody from eating it, but for just a good example, this is good little roast, good steaks. Don't grind it up, it's good. It's good by itself. So that's the next piece of meat. Now, we're just literally gonna follow this muscle. And you can see how it just peels apart. You can take it like that. Yeah, and get down in there and watch everything, but you can take, see with this, I'm actually kind of cheating and using the, the whole muscle. This is a kind of a rough. So there's another, this is the eye round, I believe. It would usually be in the center. It's the muscle that separates your more roast of your hind quarters, so your bottom round, top round, and then this would be in between those muscles. There, and then, same thing, I mean, see this big muscle here? This is the bone, so I mean, we can go here, and just for demonstration, I'll cut deep down along this bone. And I can honestly go pretty much to that knee. And you see how it just falls out. It's really not hard to cut up a deer when you know what you're doing with it. It's just managing the pieces once you're done. But this is a whole piece of meat that needs trimmed badly, but it can uh, it can get deboned very quickly. Um, obviously we still have some some little dirty work to do, but I mean, you can rip a lot of that stuff off, and then that's a whole roast, steak, whatever you want to do with it. I mean, this is a, the hindquarters, I really like to do steaks and more medium rare stuff with. Um, right here, actually, once you're in there, I did forget this. So once you get in there and you're cutting along here, I can even go in here and just trim this out for demonstration purposes. So that's the femur of this deer. And we're down in here now. And we can get down to that bone and socket. Um, it's right in there. And then this piece right here, even though this probably isn't gonna be the best to use for what we're gonna be using it for, we're just cutting this deer up like we would a normal deer that's not injured or that was shot just for demonstration. But, we can get in here. There's a really big tendon right here. So that's how you'll know you got this cut. <laughs> There's literally a huge tenant that you have to cut out, out eventually. And that's at the lower end of that bottom knee off the hind quarters. But this is still a really good piece of meat right here. Um, this might be more of a grind meat. I would grind this instead of messing around with, I mean, obviously I'd try to take out these little white lines in here. That's gonna be your more connective tissue and, and any of this mucousy membrane. I don't know, I think it's, 
just connective tissue and stuff, but that's a good example of, no, it's, you're, it's pretty much done. Uh. But that's all I really have to show on this. Um, if there's any questions, comments, if you found this video helpful, if you didn't, if you have tips, um, like I said, we're just for normal guys, so um, please like and subscribe, and we're going to wrap it up there.